Good morning. Well, today we're going to leave Amsterdam and head towards Schenectady and then Waterford. We'll be passing by Schenectady, New York. Um, we have about 40 miles to go and today is the last day on the canal. Uh, this is an exciting day. Uh, a little bit bittersweet because this has been really fun and I've enjoyed it so much. And I think Katie has as well. Um, there are a little bit of rain clouds in the sky today uh, and it is there is a chance of rain but the farther we go east the chance of rain drops and so it is 6 30 in the morning and I just started the engine up. It's a beautiful morning. Uh, the temperature is perfect out here. Um, it's not even chilly. It's in the mid 60s, maybe high 60s. There's Katie just emerged from the boat. Uh, that first sip feeling. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, there it is. That third sip feeling is Yeah, the third sip feeling. Hey everyone, I'm Parker. And I'm Katie. And this is our boat, Sea Wind. I bought Sea Wind in 2016 with my entire savings and no clue what it would take to turn her into what she is today. With the help of my dad and a few friends, I slowly tackled project after project, transforming this old boat into what I envisioned when we first met. Halfway through this five and a half year project, I met Katie and we've been inseparable ever since. In truth, this only shows a fraction of what it really took in order to get to where we're at today in a beautiful anchorage making this video. Together, we have come a long way. We have learned the beautiful and brutal lessons that the water has to offer. We have come to know heartache and loss and to dance despite it all. I work a full-time job on the go, which presents its own unique challenges and opportunities. But at the end of the day, it's our desire to move slowly and live fully that makes it all worth it. Sailing Sea Wind is our unique attempt at showing how we choose to live with a lighter carbon footprint, how we plan to make our mark on this ever-changing world. It's a place for us to show that every one of us is connected and that we will all go further together. With a big day ahead of us, we shoved off the dock heading down the Mohawk River towards lock number 10. Goodbye Amsterdam. Nice, nice dock to tie up to. No water though, we're out of water right now. And I mean the tank is bone dry. <laughs> um, but we'll fill up in Waterford. Wow, that's beautiful.
guess I should say beautiful dam. And we're just waiting here for a, uh, a boat launch. Some guy's launching a fishing boat. And uh, he wants to come through the lock. made part of the Erie Canal and we will be doing our last five locks one right after another uh, within I think quarter mile half a mile of each other and then we will be rendezvousing with Trio who uh, in in Waterford which is uh, where they've been for the last day and a half Just entered the canal again from the end of the Mohawk River, and we are just coming up on Lock Six. Hi! <laughs> Hi! Thank, Thank you. you! And Lock Six is the beginning of the last five locks, and is um, kind of a monumental time for, uh, for anyone transiting the canal, or at least for us anyway. Uh, these last five locks drop us a total of 150 feet down to the level of the Hudson River in Waterford, New York. And for us, we feel victorious, and I'm sure we'll feel even more victorious once uh, the boat is parked next to Trio, and, uh, and we're all celebrating the last lock. But uh, for now, I feel really great. <laughs> Six through two are very close together, so naturally they are nicknamed the Waterford Flight. When you enter lock six, it looks as though you are at the edge of a cliff where you prepare to drop a total of 170 feet in elevation to the Hudson River. After leaving the last lock in our wake, Katie and I were so proud of our accomplishment, making it through the Erie Canal before it closes in October without any breakdowns. All of our hard work and preparation paid off. We were almost to the ocean, almost to the rest of the world. We've officially started motoring down the Hudson River. There's Trio behind us. We're, we got the, the, the tidal current with us. We're doing between seven and seven and a half miles per hour right now. And uh, Katie wants pizza for breakfast. Good thing we bought a pizza last night. So we're in 
one last lock. This is lack, or this is lack, this is lack number one. I'm, uh, I'm getting that New York accent, I guess. And uh, this is actually the Troy lock. This is on the Hudson. We motored two miles from where we were uh, at the mouth of the Hudson, where, it, where the canal dumps in. And uh, this lock is the very last one that we will be doing for I don't really know how long unless we go through another canal system. Uh, and this is because there is a dam right over to our right that is uh, on the Hudson River. And so this lock here is not maintained by the canal system itself. It's maintained by the federal government. And so I'm pretty sure that these are like Army Corps of Engineers running this. Um, really nice guys. They gave us some good tips about tying up to this one, just a midship line on uh, on these poles here, on one pole, and we're pretty much able to control the whole thing. Um, trio's in front of us, over there, Kala 2, which is a very nice Canadian group of people. Um, they, uh, they're heading south as well. We haven't got to speak with them too much, but I have a feeling we'll get to speak with them. Maybe we'll make some friends. How about that? How about that? <laughs> Goodbye, Troy Lock. Lock number one. 1915 is stamped on that concrete. Wow. Oh, back to breakfast. Here we go. We're where we always are, in the back of the line. Choppy here, I might get pushed. Just passing Albany, New York. The feeling of this trip, it's just, it's, it's getting real now. <laughs> it feels more real than ever to be on this big river with a tidal current with us, doing between seven and a half and eight sometimes. The capital of New York, right? Yes. Yeah. It's a big city, that's what my mom just said. Yeah. I asked her, I said, I said, when we were going to New York, oh, she said, we're going to Albany. I said, oh, is that like a big city? And this is supposedly some recycling plant, which would make sense. Looks like it's like a uh, like a, a scrap metal recycling plant. So this guy just radioed us this big barge. And he asked if, he, he said, 
Is it cool if I pass you guys? <laughs> sure. And so I asked him what side of the channel he wanted us on. And he said he would pass us on our starboard. And so I said I would move over towards the red buoys that are on the port side. Goodbye, Athens. You were one of my favorite places so far, by far. What a cool little town. Really nice, free public dock. Beautiful fog. The sun burnt off the river this morning. Some really cool people that we met. Really great. And now we are heading to Catskill, New York. Four miles down river. It's a chilly one. So this is a very special moment for this boat. Um, in 1978, when Sea Wind was built, she was built in Catskill, New York, right at the mouth of the Hudson River. And right now, the place that we are going to put our mast up at today is right here on the Catskill River, right at the mouth of the Hudson, or I don't know if it would be at the mouth of the Catskill on the Hudson, but regardless, um, this shoreline right here was where Allied Boat Company existed and was where it started building boats, I believe in 1960. Um, So Trio is up there, and I think Mike, the uh, the lead guy at Riverview Marine Services, is um, talking to Trio right now, talking to Andre about where he's going to go. And we're next in line to find a dock to wait in line to get our mast put up today. Trio probably will be first, and then we will be second. Um, in 1979, Allied Boat Company transported this hull from here probably through the Erie Canal system that we came through you know, over the last couple weeks uh, to the Cleveland Boat Show. Uh, and there she was bought by Joel Kay, the original owner, who I bought her from. So this is a very special moment. So this is Riverview Marine Services. The guy who owns it, Mike, he's right over there. Super nice guy. He bought this place in 1976. Super wobbly floating dock and an Andre Silver's cabinet maker. <laughs> And then Lady Liberty, yeah, with the Almighty with Windex. The Almighty Windex. <laughs> Our boat has come home, and so we are. It's kind of fitting, it seems, to be now starting as a sailboat again from this, uh, from this, you know, geographical location. Okay, so this land right here, where these townhouses are. Yeah, Catskill Creek condominiums. This right here, all out here, is where Allied Boat Company existed. 
Allied Boat Company grew its roots on Catskill Creek in Catskill, New York in 1960. They built sailboats there until 1980 when the company closed its doors for the third and final time. The original Sea Wind was a 30-foot catch designed by naval architect Thomas Gilmer. Apogee, hull number one, owned by Alan Eddy, made the company famous for the first fiberglass boat ever to sail around the world. Our Sea Wind 32 is the second version of Allied's flagship model. The second iteration of the company, called Wright Allied, commissioned Gilmer to design a slightly larger, improved version of the original Sea Wind, starting production in 1975. Ours is hull number 89 and was built in 1978. She has a cutter rig, only one of 11. The company took number 89 to the Cleveland Boat Show in early 1979, and it was bought by Joel Kay, who named the boat Seawind after the model. He kept it in Cleveland on Lake Erie its entire life until I found her in storage and for sale, ready for a new adventure. This is where Seawind was born. It's not much to look at, but it sure holds a special meaning, huh? <laughs> yeah, oh, Trio's mass is upright. All right, we uh, we've started to disassemble a few things on the mast. We're getting ready to put it up. Um, Katie and I carried the boom over to the lift, which is that thing right there. Trio just stood their mast up and they're tweaking a few things and then they'll be leaving that dock and we're gonna head right over there as soon as, uh, as soon as they're gone. And so we were instructed to have everything ready. So like I set up the flag halyard just so it's not interfering with anything again. And I will finish untying the mast over there. I started taking down a little bit of the framing here because what we have to do is we have to pick the mast up, pick the weight of the mast up and move it forward out from underneath the solar panels before we do anything else. So that'll be a little bit tricky. Um, so, and to do that, I'm gonna, I took one piece off, but these horizontal pieces here, I'll take the other one off right before we lift, or right after we lift the weight off of it. And, um, and then we'll thread this needle one more time. And I'm not putting any of my wind instruments on until the thing is out from underneath the solar panels. Get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll get away. This is what we waited for. did we do? Our mask back. We put our mask back up. I've never been so excited to put sails open. There's the boom up there. There's the mast up there. Gotta give a shout out to, to Will and Mike from Riverview Marine Services. So good. Class A service. Patience. Professional. Skill. Professionalism. To us, cheers to sea wind. Yeah. Cheers to being a sailboat again. Yay. Love you. Not looking back, eyes on the freeway, Bonnie and Clyde, a classic.
Good balancing skill. You really got good balance. Look at that. Look at that. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh wow. Wow, that was really. Wow, look at that. Holy crap. Wow. It's so cool to watch. Wow. Wow. Look at that. It's like, is the head spinning 360 degrees? <laughs> is it? I can't. It almost looks. Oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh whoa, okay, I'm pruning. Cut some feathers out. He's pruning there. Look at yeah, the itch like a dog. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 